Have you ever stared at the dark sky and wondered if there are other beings out there in the vastness of space? Well, you're not alone. Many people have pondered this question, and it's called the Fermi Paradox. The paradox is so real that it has been a part of our solar system for quite a long, but sadly, it was never this much questioned. The Fermi Paradox is the biggest puzzle of our universe that seeks to answer where aliens are. Scientists assume that our solar system is just roughly 4.5 billion years old compared to the 13.8 billion old universe. Thus, since then, it must have been visited by extraterrestrial creatures. Also, there are just so many stars and planets out in the universe that it's highly likely there should be other intelligent life forms, like aliens. Although it seems like we have met the aliens, the evidence isn't enough to support any theory. There are misconceptions and some scientists have a firm belief in Fermi while some disapprove it wholeheartedly. The Fermi paradox dates back to 1950, when a Nobel Prize-winning physicist, Enrico Fermi, supposedly made a casual lunchtime conversation. And since then, astrophysicists and biologists have been scratching their heads. Owing to his ideology, representatives of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence explained it later on by saying, Fermi grasped that any civilization with a modest amount of rocket technology and an immodest amount of imperial incentive could rapidly colonize the entire galaxy. Within a few tens of millions of years, every star system could be brought under the wing of an empire. Tens of millions of years may sound like a long project, but in fact, it's quite short compared to the age of the galaxy, which is roughly a thousand times more. However, Fermi didn't get the chance to research any further as he died in 1954, but his ideologies are still making waves. The Fermi paradox is a contradiction that denies astronomy, physics, philosophy, and even our very existence. Since the universe is already so vast, with billions and even trillions of celestial bodies, there might be some conditions too right for life to exist in some other world just like on Earth. But despite its vastness, there are literally no signs of it. No spacecraft, no blue-green signals, no extinct alien creatures, and no clear-cut evidence of extraterrestrial civilizations. Let's break it down with numbers. Suppose that our universe has 100 billion galaxies, each with at least 100 billion stars. Now, scientists estimate that each of the five stars has some conditions called habitable zone, where water can exist. Do you get what this figure elaborates on? Given these numbers, it represents billions of chances for life in our galaxy alone. And here, the question comes, where is everybody? If there's a life, where it is? Physicist Fermi was equally excited to find out these answers. He was damn sure there must be something hidden from our naked eyes. Even after Fermi left the world, numerous extraterrestrial research projects were made public. Projects like SETI have been scanning the cosmos for radio signals. Anything that would suggest a technological civilization is out there. Yes, it sounds like putting a radio in a desert knowing there would be no signal to catch. But scientists have to do what they have to. Let's take a look at what a few theories say about meeting aliens. First up, there is a great filter theory that tends to resolve the Fermi paradox that says why we haven't encountered the aliens yet. This theory says that there must be a stage, either evolutionary or something biological, that is extremely complex and difficult and apparently refrains any kind of life from emerging. Consider it as a barrier so monumental and enormous that it filters out civilizations, preventing them from developing into advanced spacefaring entities. There are a few steps related to it. First is the emergence of a star within a planet that has the right conditions for life, not too hot or not too cold, but equally balanced, just like the Earth's position around the sun. The next ring involves the development of molecules capable of reproduction, which is the most essential to generating life even further. Then the single life cell leaps from non-living to living entities. This is where we see the first simple, single-cell organisms begin to thrive. These cells later transformed into more complex forms, possibly through symbiotic relationships. And then, the single and complex molecular structures will transform into multiple cells, which opens the door to greater complexity in forms and functions. With that, the hypothetical final rings finally become a spacefaring civilization that can spread across and colonize the galaxy. However, the point to ponder is that the Great Filter has three further steps that are almost impossible to achieve. If the filter is behind us, it means that one of the previous steps, likely the leap from non-living to living or single-cell to multi-cell life, is quite rare to achieve. And it would explain why we haven't seen any evidence of extraterrestrial life. 
But if the great filter is ahead of us, the daunting challenges of the future are likely to prevent us from reaching that last ring of the ladder. This could be anything from difficulty in developing the technology for interstellar travel to the possibility that all sufficiently advanced civilizations self-destruct through war, or there might be some other unforeseen risks as well. Shortly, this theory explains the Fermi paradox and offers a framework for thinking about our civilization's future. But the paradox doesn't just end here. We've got another intriguing theory known as the rare Earth hypothesis. Unlike the great filter theory that says life fails to evolve to advanced stages universally, the rare Earth hypothesis is quite straightforward and suggests that Earth-like planets capable of supporting complex life are exceptionally uncommon in the universe. Earth is an optimal, ideal planet that's at a balanced distance from the Sun, which makes it capable enough to support all kinds of lives. This region is often referred to as the Goldilocks Zone, not too hot and not too cold. It also has a magnetic field, strong enough to deflect harmful solar radiation, which helps keep our planet's atmosphere quite normal. Also, the Moon is large enough to stabilize Earth's tilted rotation and keep it on the axis to maintain normal climatic conditions. Its geology is also one of a kind. It recycles nutrients and carbon throughout the crust, preventing a runaway greenhouse effect like the one that occurred on Venus. It also helps emphasize essential chemicals and gases in the biosphere, aiding in maintaining the atmospheric composition necessary for life. With all these factors, the rare Earth hypothesis rightfully argues that making another Earth-like planet is quite unachievable. And that's why we haven't met and are unable to venture into alien spacecraft yet. But again, there is another theory that adds another layer of complexity to the Fermi paradox and is known as the zoo hypothesis. This hypothesis is as wild as its name. It suggests that extraterrestrial or alien civilization is already well developed and is aware of us but has chosen not to make contact, observing humanity in a manner similar to zookeepers watching animals in a zoo. Hence the name. This theory might want us to comprehend that they have a strict non-interference policy regarding emerging societies. The reasons might vary. One could be the preservation of their habitat, which allows them to develop naturally with their own self-will without any outside interruption. Advanced beings might believe that premature contact could culturally contaminate or even destabilize a developing society. Another reason could be that alien creatures are simply observing us to study or protect, ensuring that the universal ecology of life evolves without artificial disruption. Simply, these advanced civilizations might not be interested in interacting with us, telling us that we are not yet ready or sophisticated enough to engage with them. However, it's knowledgeable that the zoo hypothesis sounds more speculative or somewhat too good to be true kind of imagination that's backed with almost no scientific evidence. But it serves as a thought-provoking idea that emphasizes our limited understanding of potential extraterrestrial motives and behaviors. Nevertheless, we've got Drake equations as well. This helps us navigate the number of galaxies, active, communicative extraterrestrial civilizations in the Milky Way. Scientists are using this mathematical logic to stimulate scientific dialogue at the first scientific meeting on the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. It is quite like a methodological framework for examining the factors associated with extraterrestrial life and organizing our knowledge and ignorance about it. Yes, the Fermi paradox sounds fascinating, but proper evidence hasn't been found yet. All those theories are more speculative than being scientific. But scientists are too intrigued to find out what's happening and we can anticipate sooner or later that the Fermi Paradox will be resolved and we'll be able to know why we haven't met the aliens yet. So, it's a wrap. Hit the subscribe button and let us know if you believe in extraterrestrial life.